Today we're going to be doing a dumbbell cone fly. This is a shad dart dumbbell eyes. You can see with the dumbbell on the front there, we're doing chartreuse. And this is a really popular pattern in the Fletcher's area, but just in the Potomac all around. And especially because of the flaps that's built into it. So we're going to start off with the size six streamer hook. You can use a size six or a size eight. Doesn't matter. I prefer a size six just because the hookup ratio tends to be a bit better, but you can go either way. It's really important to have the hook tight in your vise for this one because there's a good amount of pressure you're going to be applying. We're also going to be using chartreuse 210 denier thread. The, the very least you want to go is probably 140, but I prefer a 210 just because it's the little bit of extra strength especially when you're doing the dumbbell eyes because you want to have it pretty tight on there. You don't want it to wiggle. So we're going to start our tie-in right here at the, the front eyelet, and you're going to want to go just a little bit down and then stop, and you're going to want to cut your tag end right there because we're not going to advance down for a second. Now, for the dumbbell eyes, you can either use white or chartreuse. I prefer the white just because it stands out a bit, but either works. Now, before we put the dumbbell, dumbbell eyes on, you're going to want to build a hump right here for the eyes to sit on. And that just helps. And the, a lot of this fly is just getting it so that the dumbbell eyes don't wiggle because that's a big problem when you're on the river. You don't want to have a fly that all of a sudden just falls apart when you're on your second fish of the day. So once we've kind of got that bump and you want it to be a bit of a valley right there, right towards the front of the eyelet, we're going to place the dumbbell eyes on there. And I apologize if you can't see it too well because my hands are blocking it, but trust me, they're there. You're gonna hold it right in that hump and you're gonna get your thread. You're gonna pull a bit of extra out and you're gonna do really tight turns while making sure to pinch those eyes. And you're gonna wanna do about 10 to 15 while maintaining it and only in one direction. A lot of people start off their dumbbell eyes by doing the figure eight. And really you want to start it off by doing just a bunch in one direction and then we'll, we'll straighten it out soon. So once we've gotten it tight, you're going to notice it's bending to the left, but that's okay because now we're going to take the thread and we're going to go the other direction and we're going to correct it. And now this just puts a lot of tension on it because you've got 10 to 15 wraps going either way. So pretty soon here, it's going to get, straightened out and the more you do it just tightens it and there you go now it's straight and that's not going to budge even right there but we're, we're going to do more wraps now this is where you can start doing some tight figure eights just a couple of those and you're going to this is the point where you're going to add some super glue this isn't a fly that demands a lot of glue i know that some people have an issue with that i do too but this, you just want to add a little bit of glue, oh. a little bit of glue onto it. And that's going to really fasten it. And we're going to put a couple thread wraps on top of that glue just to make sure it doesn't wiggle. And you can even add a bit of a thread base below the dumbbell eyes so that doesn't move at all. Now at this point, we're going to advance our thread all the way back to the bend of the hook just right before it turns because you don't want to have your your flash going down now for the flash you're going to want to have something like this material i know that some people like to just use crystal flash i find that this works a little bit better because it's easier seen but either works the most important part is that you just have your length pre-cut because when you go into it, you don't want to have to be pulling clumps out every time. Now you're actually going to want to pull about twice as much out as you want, because you're going to bend it around your thread. And I'll show you what that means. Cause that sounds like nonsense, but you're going to cut twice as much as you need. And then you're going to get your thread, pull a bit extra out, place it on, and then make it so that you can hold it like this. So now you can just do a normal thread wrap while holding the flash behind. 
and just tighten that flash right onto the hook. That allows you to get twice as much and use less flash so that you're wasting less and can save money. And then you just want to gonna you want to have your flash somewhat short because these shad tend to like to nip at long tails. And it, I see people out there with long tails and they're catching less fish and they don't know why. It's because the shad will just nip at it and you won't even know. They'll nip at the long tail and you won't even know it. All right, so at this point, we're going to want to get our tinsel. We got the extra, sorry, not tinsel. You're going to want to get extra. This is chartreuse. I know that some people like to get holographic stuff just to put on the back and then they only put this on the front. But I like to do it the whole way just because it adds a single texture. Now we're going to tie that onto the shank up towards the middle and then we're going to do that all the way right back to our flash. And then at this point, we're gonna bring our thread back up to the dumbbell eyes and pull some extra thread out. And this is where it's really helpful to have a rotary vise, because if you don't, you're gonna have to move your hands around your, your fly and it just ends up looking a little bit messier because it's not as tight. Now you're gonna hold your material tight and you're gonna start spinning. And there's already gonna be a little bit of a natural bump right back there because of the flash. So you're gonna to need to do less wraps back there. But when you start advancing, you're gonna to wanna to bring it closer and do more wraps in each spot so that it gets to get a little bit thicker each little bit you go. You can see that just tighter, a little bit more the further up you go. And at this point, as soon as you reach the dumbbell eyes, you're going to want to get your thread and you're going to want to bring it to the front and hold it at the eyelet. And you can just let that sit. Now with your material, you're going to want to do what's like, what's called a, a 3D figure eight, which is confusing at first. But what you want to do is you're going to get your material and you're going to pull it down and wrap it around and then bring it back up. Do a circle around the dumbbell eyes and then do the same thing going the opposite direction. And what this is doing is it's just gonna make a really nice ball sitting around your dumbbell eyes so that when you're finished, it just looks like one even material and you can't even tell the dumbbell eyes are under there. All right, now at this point, you're gonna to wanna to pull your material forward, get your thread, wrap it around that. You're gonna pull it tight down to the hook and just with one wrap over it, you're going to do a couple more thread wraps right there. And you should be able to just let go of the material and it should just dangle and it shouldn't loosen at all. And this is how you know that you're ready to cut it. So now you can just cut that off. It shouldn't make any difference. We're going to go ahead and whip finish. Oh, uh-oh. And that happens sometimes. Sometimes you break your thread, but nothing you can do about it, especially when you're doing a harder fly like this where you're pulling harder. But all you can do is just tie back in and try and use as few thread wraps as possible and it should look just fine. Well, All right, now we're gonna do a whip finish. And you can add a dot of glue at the front, doesn't matter, and then that's it. And this is a really important fly to know how to do a whip finish because it's holding so much in that if you don't, if you try and do some other knot, it's gonna eventually come undone. And I find that this just tends to make your flies last longer. And that's it. That is the dumbbell shad dart. Jack, very nice. Um, Thank you.